No, no questions? Okay. So uh, if not, we'll move on. Thank you again, Gilly. Okay, thank you. So the next presentation comes from the Weizmann Institute, and uh, the title is Tensile Properties of uh, Carbon Nanotubes Reinforced PMMA Electrospan Fibers. And uh, the speaker is Xiao Men Xiu, and I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Okay, before my presentation, I would like to thank the organizing committee for giving me, for giving me this uh, opportunity to pre present my work. Uh, today, I want to talk uh, about uh, tensile properties of uh, carbon nanotubes reinforced polymethyl methacrylate uh, electrospan fibers. And this work has been supervised by Professor Wagner from Weizmann Institute. Uh, in this talk, uh, I will uh, talk, uh, uh, briefly introduce something about uh, electrospinning and then room temperature tensile test. Uh, later on, I will show you some uh, mechanical properties of uh, this composite and followed by, uh, followed by the conclusions. First of all, um, we know that uh, because of the unique structure of uh, carbon nanotubes, uh, it has been uh, considered as a potential Mm, potential ideal filler for improving the thermal, mechanical, and electrical properties. But this potential has only been partially realized because of uh, some practical difficulties. Uh, as far as the, as far as, uh, the mechanical property, properties concerned, the alignment of the carbon nanotubes is very critical. Uh, it has been uh, it has been known that uh, the optimized uh, mechanical properties can only be achieved when the nanotubes is aligned uh, in the matrix with respect to the applied stress. And here we, we try to use electrospinning to align the carbon nanotubes. And this is a, this is a simple principle of uh, electrospinning. Uh, we put a polymer solution inside the syringe, and then we add a high voltage to the, so to the solution, and the strong uh, electric field uh, liquid jet will be um, ejected from the, the, the syringe nozzle, and then this uh, polymer fiber will fly in the, uh, in the elect electric field, and the fiber will be stressed uh, a thousand times in a milli, thousand, thousand of times uh, in a millisecond, and this uh, rapid stretching generates uh, a high shear force. Therefore, uh, align the carbon nanotubes inside the polymer, and also because of the fast evaporation of the solvent, the the polymer kind of uh, freeze in the in the state, which uh, restrain it from uh, coming back to the equilibrium. Therefore, we can uh, contain this uh, alignment in the composite. Based on this uh, electrospinning idea, we managed to make the composite with the pristine multiwall carbon nanotubes. Uh, under the electron microscope, we can see that indeed the carbon nanotubes are embedded in the a composite and aligned uh, along the fiber ac axis. But also sometimes uh, we observe this uh, big agglomerate. In order to improve the dispersion and also the stress, um, the interface between the carbon nanotubes and the polymer, we decide to use some kind of um, a functionalized carbon nanotubes. Um, here we use the carboxylate nanotubes and also another kind of functionalization. Um, we have a, com a collaboration, and this group produced some uh, carbon nanotubes by the 1-3 um, dipolar cyclo addition reaction. And uh, here we can see this uh, functional group has the same uh, has the similar group with PMMA. Therefore, um, the Compatible 
compatibility will be higher than the pristine nanotubes, and therefore the interface will be enhanced. Here we see um, the diameter of the fibers is around 500 nanometers. In order to measure the mechanical properties, we need to control the tensile test precisely. Um, before, uh, before this work, uh, our group tried to measure the mechanical properties of this electrospun fiber inside the ESAM chamber. Um, but we all know that uh, the subject, sub, uh, subject in the ESAM chamber uh, suffered a very extreme uh, condition, for example, high, uh, high vacuum and uh, all kinds of radiations. And also we know that uh, the heating effect generates by the electron beam. And this, uh, this effects will affect the mechanical properties of the polymer. So we decide to move the whole setup into room temperature. And this, uh, in our lab, we have an inverted microscope. Um, onto the microscope, we put a stage of uh, this uh, tensile tester. On the right hand side, we put a, a AFM cantilever, which is uh, calibrated before the test. And on the right hand side, this is a nano manipulator. We put our electrospun fibers onto the stage. This is the idea, this is the principle of uh, our process. First of all, we have this aluminum uh, collector. We cut it uh, into several trenches which allow us um, to align the electrospun fibers onto it. And then we cut the aluminum collector, align this uh, dash line, and take this part, put it onto the holder of the nano manipulator. And then uh, AFM can deliver with a drop of uh, epoxy glue onto it, coming towards this uh, electrospun fiber. We'll wait about uh, 30 minutes until the glue dry, and then we manage to take off this uh, fiber from the substrate, and then this fiber will plunge into another drop of the glue. Therefore, we can fix both sides of the fiber by pulling the... Okay, before we do the, uh, the test, we need to wait until both sides are dry because we're using uh, epoxy. And then um, we pull the nano manipulator this side, which results in the elongation of the fiber and also the deflection of the cantilever. When the, de when the deflection of the cantilever is small enough, we can uh, use simply by the Hooke's law to get uh, the, the stress uh, by giving the the spring constant of the cantilever, and also we can get uh, the, the strain of the fiber. Uh, this whole process uh, was recorded by the digital camera uh, attached to the inverted microscope. And in order to show you this videos, I need to close the presentation. And first of all, I'm going to show you the, um, the video of uh, pure PMMA fiber, and you see this uh, black blob is just a tiny drop of uh, epoxy. Upon a certain point, we will see here there's a black dot, which means the necking happens, and then the, the fiber break. Actually, it didn't show here. Something missing. Okay, what's happened when we put uh, pristine carbon nanotubes inside? We see necking happen here, and then the snacking didn't result in the break of, breakage of the fiber, just the, the necking propagates along the fibers, then the fiber break. We also have some videos of the um, functionalized carbon nanotubes, but uh, the video is somehow um, similar to the, to the pure PMMA fibers. And these are the typical stress strain curves of uh, all the specimens we measured uh, in our work. The black line is the pure PMMA fibers. And from the stress strain curves, um, we can get uh, several parameters. For example, the slope of the linear part of the curve uh, is the um, 
modulus of the, the materials, and also we can get uh, the um, strength of the fiber and also the fracture strain of the materials. And another parameter we can, we can get from this stress strain curve is the toughness. And toughness is um, defined as the, the energy per, per volume absorbed by the materials before rupturing, and which we can get from the area under the stress strain curve. And we can see actually the best uh, performance material from our work is uh, PMMA with uh, pristine, uh, pristine nanotubes. Um, we can see the, the strength is uh, almost uh, twice uh, as those of uh, pristine, uh, as the pristine PMMA, but uh, for the carboxylated, for the functionalized nanotubes, the mechanical properties is uh, not enhanced. And this is just a table. We summarize all the data of the tensile test. Actually, we still remember at the beginning I showed you that um, by, putting a carbo uh, by putting functionalized nanotubes, we improve the dispersion of the, uh, the nanotubes and also the, the interface between the nanotubes and the matrix is, should be higher. And therefore, this kind of uh, composite based on the functionalized nanotubes will be much higher than those of the uh, pristine nanotubes. Uh, what's happened here? In order to explain this uh, phenomena, we need to go back to the chemistry process of uh, functionalization. We know that uh, this kind of uh, this kind of uh, reaction is um, um, introducing some uh, functional group to the outermost wall of the carbon nanotubes by the covalent bond. And the covalent bond form um, introducing the sp3 hybridization of the carbon at atoms, uh, which sacrificing the sp2 hybridization. And we know that the perfect uh, structure of the uh, graphene layer is made of this uh, sp2 hybridization, which means uh, by doing the functionalization, actually we introduced some defects into the nanotubes. And also we know that um, the stress always uh, uh, carried by the outermost layer of the carbon nanotubes. In order to uh, demonstrate the pres uh, presence of the defects, we measure the Raman spectra of uh, all these uh, carbon nanotubes. Uh, the black line is the pristine nanotubes, and this is uh, carboxylic nanotubes, and uh, this is the uh, F nanotubes. And uh, the peak around the uh, 1300 uh, wave number is, is called D-band, which is a uh, correlated to the um, uh, amorphous carbon and the defect structure of the uh, carbon nanotubes. And this G-band uh, locates at um, 1600 with number is uh, called the G-band, which correlates to the graphite structure. And the G-band uh, is the overtone of the uh, D-band. Um, there are some uh, there's some uh, uh, research show that uh, the intensity between D band, uh, the, the ratio of the intensity between D band and G band are, are used to evaluate the density of the Two defects. Minutes. Okay. Um, so the higher of, the higher this ratio means the higher density of the defects. And indeed, we see that uh, from pristine nanotubes, th this number is below one, and uh, when we do functionalization, this, uh, this ratio is increased. And also, we see the same trend of uh, D-band and G-band. And another um, more visual uh, proof, which supports our um, explanation, is from uh, time pictures. Um, after the functionalization, we see that uh, the smooth surface of uh, pristine nanotubes uh, has some uh, defects, for example, the, the impurities like the, the kinked, and sometimes the, the nanotubes just twist and collapse, which, uh, which shows that uh, a lot of uh, defects in the nanotubes. And also we, uh, we have uh, some pictures from, of the surfa fracture surface of the composite fibers. We see a lot of uh, nanotubes protrude out of the fracture surface. 
on the surface of a pristine nanotube space decomposite, uh, we don't see any polymer attached to it, which means the, the interface is very, very weak. Uh, but on the surface of um, functionalized nanotubes, we see that uh, there are some uh, polymers attached to it, which uh, indicates the, the high interface, and then which means the stress transfer will be much stronger. But this doesn't uh, automatically mean that uh, the mechanical properties will also be strong. Um, so to conclude, I hope I convinced you that uh, electrospinning is an efficient method to make uh, carbon nanotubes based one-dimensional fibers. And also from the um, mechanical test, uh, we see that pristine carbon nanotubes reinforce the polymer fiber shows higher strength and the higher Young's modulus. And also the toughness is much higher than the other types of the composite. On the other hand, the chemical functionalization does improve the dispersion of the carbon nanotubes as well as the interface between the nanotubes and the, the polymer, but at the expense of the mechanical properties, for example, the strength and the toughness and, of course, the modulus. Uh, this is likely because of the defects are introduced to the carbon nanotubes by the chemical modification. And here we consider this uh, chemical modification as a, a double-edged uh, sword, which um, which we need to consider there, there is a trade between the dispersion and the mechanical properties. Thank you for your attention. So we, you have exhausted the time, so I just uh, ask you a brief question. What was the content of the carbon nanotubes with respect to the binder? Okay. Um, the original, in the original solution, the weight percent of the carbon nanotubes to the polymer is 1.5 by weight. But uh, there's, uh, we didn't try to, um, we didn't get any information after the electrospinning because uh, we tried, uh, tried to use the TGA, but we didn't get any information. The, first of all, the electrospun fibers uh, are very, um, very light. The density is very low, so we can't get uh, any information. But in the original solution, this ratio is 1.5 by weight. So let us thank the speaker again.